Hello, today I'm here to talk about a study that was just published at Developed Medicine and Child Neurology. This scoping review is entitled Development of Children, Adolescents, and Young Adults with Cerebral Palsy According to the ICF, a scoping review. It was developed by me, Dr. Paula Chagas, under the supervision of Dr. Peter Rosenbaum during my postdoctoral fellowship at McMaster University with the participation of colleagues from Brazil and Dr. Robert Palizano. So we know that cerebral palsy can cause many complications. Between them, we know that one in four children will not talk, one in 15 will not be able to feed orally, and one in 10 will have severe vision impairment. So the question that arises is, will a child with extensive limit function impairment be able to go to school, to play with their friends, to work, and to engage in social activities? So the aims of this scoping review was to identify and provide a descriptive overview of longitudinal studies of development of children, adolescents, and young adults with CP, and map the areas addressed according to the components of the ICF. So this scoping review and the mapping of outcomes in the ICF framework are intended to provide a comprehensive summary of all the longitudinal research that was developed to use in, during the past 20 years. So the methods that we used was an article search performed at November 2021 and updated at August 2022 in the databases Medline, PubMed, Lilac, Enbase, Cochrane, Sinal, and Scop. The information were extracted according to the study and the participants' characteristics, the outcomes and results according to the ICF, the years of follow-up, and the country of development. The inclusion of the studies were according to the observational type of studies, there has to be a longitudinal study, and the follow-up of children until 12 years of age, adolescents until 18 years of age, and young adults up and up, uh, up 18, 19 years of age or with CP across a period of time. And the report outcome measured were able to describe participants' developmental changes according to time across the time, according to the ICF components. The exclusion criteria were studies with outcomes related to medical treatments, such as botulinum toxin type A, neurological and or orthopedic surgery. Also studies that did not clearly report their outcomes were also excluded. So in the results, we were able to retrieve 56 studies with 19,438 participants according to almost all the outcomes of the ICF, mainly in body functions and structures, with 42.9 in body functions and structures and 57.9 in activity. In the participation, we had only 14.6 studies reporting their outcomes in the environmental factors, only 3.6% of their studies. Personal factors did not report outcomes eh, as their main result. The longitudinal follow-up was in the period of five weeks until 17 years of follow-up. The results then were described according to many areas of these components of the ICF, and in the personal factors were only used to describe the participants. The interpretation of the scoping review is that many studies investigated the development according to the components of the ICF focusing especially in body function and activities. So future studies should focus especially on contextual factors and participations and to amplify the years of follow-up until the transition to adulthood. So to summarize, this paper adds that in the international classification of functioning, disability and health can be used to map a range of outcomes according uh, through the developmental studies. The main outcomes investigated in children with cerebral palsy were activity and body function and structures, and little has been explored in participation and contextual factors over time. The main classification used to stratify the participants up to now was the cross-motor function classification system. Thank you.